back in 1996. Um, I'd worked for him for about five years at the University of Washington Medical Center. It was in October of 1996, probably about the middle of the month, or I think it was around the 15th, that uh, Jonathan came into the office and you could clearly see that something had, had happened to Jonathan. And um, he was you know, kind of subdued and quiet. Um, something had happened to his dog the, the, the weekend prior, and I knew that um, he was very upset by that, um, even though he still was very professional in the office. Um, and within about a week, Jonathan no longer existed. Uh, his office was cleaned out. We were, the nurses on his uh, staff were reassigned to other positions in the hospital and were told as far as we were concerned that uh, jo Dr. Jonathan Reed did not exist. He never worked at the University of Washington Medical Center. And uh, it would be wise for us to uh, adhere to that thought as well, otherwise uh, we would no longer be working as well. There were no questions asked, no questions answered, and uh, that's just the way it was. And it was like he was just completely and totally railroaded right out of the, out of the hospital. And the project that we were working on was closed down. The patients were sent to other doctors in the hospital. Um, we were all advised not to speak about Dr. Reed, not to speak about him, not to speak you know, to anybody within the hospital, outside the hospital, whatever. Um, management had decided that Dr. Reed did not exist, and uh, they were very clear that as far as we were concerned and as far as our job security was concerned, we'd never heard of it. That's Betty, the nurse. Now let's hear Valerie, the banker. For many years I was in banking, um, probably 20 years I was a banker in various aspects of banking. Dr. Reed was a favorite among all the tellers. I mean, he came in and he would often um, bring his, his dog because we gave dog biscuits out to dogs in the, in the drive up to keep them. And so his dog Susie loved coming to the bank. He couldn't drive anywhere near the neighborhood even if he didn't want to make a transaction. And he came in once or twice a week, um, sometimes more. Uh, and over the years, I did a lot of transactions with him um, as I moved up in the bank. Um, loan payments and deposits, and he always had a good account. Um, he had a lot of money. There came a day when we were called into a meeting, and we were told that we didn't know him. We, if anybody asked about him, we never knew this customer. And of course, in banking, there's a huge confidentiality anyway. And we, so we thought, you know, doctor, maybe it was a suit. Of course, we wouldn't talk about him. No, we didn't know him. There never was a person. And I went to check his SIG card. I'm sorry, his signature card. I, I knew all his paperwork, and I knew none of it was there. Nothing. It had been there the night before because I had been looking at loan payments and when they come due, and I knew that I thought that he had one coming due. And oftentimes we did a phone transaction to automatically transfer, and just preparing, and it was all gone, everything. And I basically got in trouble because I, they said he didn't exist, and I said he did exist, and you know, what was going on, and this was against the law. And they said that if I wanted to work in any sort of banking, that he did not exist. And what didn't I do understand? After a while, Jonathan contacted me. As I said, we became friends. And I was very concerned. Um, he contacted me, and we met, um, not locally at all. And I w was willing to do that. I was so relieved to hear that he was alive. Um, but we met several times. Um, so when I went back, I took on the bank. I mean, I let them know that I knew they were lying. And I'd be glad to come forward and say that. And I would go forward with a suit because what they were doing was illegal. And it was amazing how they really didn't, they were angry with me, I was angry with them. 
but there wasn't a lot of power playing and suddenly they were forthcoming with part of Jonathan's money, about half of it.